The Berlin Wall has long stood as a subject used to ridicule us Marxists for decades. Whenever a pro-capitalist debater has lost ground due to his own ideological weakness, he'll resort to attacking socialist states on alleged human rights grounds. This is stock and trade for the defenders of the most inhumane system ever created, capitalism. But this kind of simple-minded hate is devoid of any real context. It is devoid of any real understanding of why the Berlin Wall was built to begin with. To them, it is a symbol of oppression, a monstrous 1984-style dictatorship, wholly opposed to freedom. The truth is far from what is parroted in the mainstream media, and yes, even alternative media. On August 31st, 1961, the wall began construction. During its entire life, the wall stood as a physical and ideological barrier between the capitalist West and socialist East. The West bemoaned the creation of the wall while being the very cause of it. The German Democratic Republic authorities officially referred to the Berlin Wall as the Anti-Fascist Protection Rampart, or Anti-Fascistischer Schutzwall. Later, the wall became the ultimate symbol of the Iron Curtain, the global battle for dominance between the East and the West. The most glaring inaccuracy is the purported reason for the wall. The bourgeois-dominated education system and media will tell you the purpose of it was to prevent anyone from leaving the country. The reality stands quite stark from this historical revisionism. The basic fact is the wall was created to protect the GDR from the threat posed by the West. West Berlin Mayor Will Brandt called West Berlin a thorn in the side of the GDR. Brandt even proclaimed, quite frankly, we want to be the disturber of the peace. This clearly demonstrates the intent of the West to be a provocative force in dealing with the sovereignty of the GDR. They had deliberately posed themselves as the enemies of socialism, with the goal of destroying it. This should be considered not controversial at all. Capitalism and socialism are direct opposing forces vying for the future of the world. That they would be in an antagonistic relationship is wholly natural and expected. It is interesting to note the use of language used by East Germans. They call the wall anti-fascist protection rampart. Now, what fascists were they referring to? This has often been dismissed by wholly dishonest academics as some kind of manifestation of hyperbole or slander against the capitalist West, which they oppose. Not true. In fact, it is a matter of record that the Nazis were still in power in many positions in West Germany well into the 1960s. When the anti-fascist wall was built between the 1950s and 1960s, over 50% of West German senior justice ministry officials were ex-Nazis. This has been confirmed by government reports. Between 1949 and 1971, 90 of the West German Justice Ministry's 170 judges and lawyers were ex-members of the Nazi Party, an official study presented by German Justice Minister Hugo Maas revealed. Of those 90, at least 34 had been members of the SA, the original paramilitary wing of the Nazi Party. The SA played a significant role in Adolf Hitler's rise to power and was responsible for the crimes committed during the 1938 Kristallnacht, also known as the Night of Broken Glass, when more than 90 Jews were killed. Many of the judges had also been members of the Nazi special tribunals, which operated outside the ordinary justice system and were used by the Nazis to carry out summary executions and crack down on dissent. Now, in addition to this, a total of 25 cabinet ministers, one president and one chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, a post-war Germany is, is officially known, had been members of Nazi organizations. The documents revealed that Chancellor Kurt Goreg Kieslinger, a member of the Christian Democratic Union who governed Germany from 1966 to 1969, had been a member of the Nazi party ever since Adolf Hitler seized power. According to the Interior Ministry list, German President Walter Schell, a member of the business-friendly Free Democratic Party who was in office from 1974 to 1979, had been a Nazi party member from 41 to 42. This same report cites this as a reason why so few Nazis were persecuted for war crimes, essentially because the U.S.-backed Western Germany wanted to use them for post-war government. The U.S. and West Germany knowingly allied and brought into power people who were responsible for the worst war in history. With the East in full knowledge of this, combined with the fact that they had declared themselves to be an enemy, made it very clear that there was to be no peace with them. Defenses were absolutely necessary. 
this threat was indeed very real. It was the West that broke away from the East by introducing a separate currency reform in 1948. Thus, the actions of the pro-capitalist faction deliberately split Germany and even West Berlin into two currency areas. Afterwards, in 1954, the West was brought into NATO, a military organization with the express intent of being a threat to the Eastern Bloc. Once established, the official policy of the Bundeswehr was the annexation of the East, a deliberate threat of violence and subjugation. It was made official on July 11, 1961. About a month later, this semi-declaration of war, the construction of the Berlin Wall began. The hostility did not end there. The activities aimed at overthrowing socialism and annexing East Germany accelerated. Radical transformations took place. The city of West Berlin became the epicenter of hostile actions. Upwards of 90 espionage organizations were created with the explicit intent of sabotaging Eastern society. The RIAS, American broadcasting station in West Berlin, also known as Radio in America Sector, was used to organize sabotage against the East and other socialist countries. Clearly, there was never any attempt to live peacefully with the socialist East. There was always a policy of espionage and other warlike actions. In reality, the situation is being aggravated by persons who play at being the strong men in our state frontier, who are turning West Berlin to a NATO base and daily inciting West Berliners against the GDR. Municipal railway cars are being destroyed, frontier guards attacked and brutally shot, tunnels dug for agents, and bomb attacks made on the GDR frontier security installations. Many farcical stories are told of infinite numbers of people fleeing the supposedly totalitarian socialist system. Such claims are wholly without merit. One such claim can be found on the Wikipedia page on the subject of the wall. Fantastically, it is claimed that 100,000 people attempted to flee the East into the West. When one looks for a source on this fanciful number, they are given a link to a CNN article. This article says nothing about 100,000 anything. Along with that, there is the claim that 140 to 200 people were killed trying to cross the border. CNN's source for this claim? A study that gives simply no source for the fatalities that may or may not have even occurred. They simply list them as investigations. Nothing is cited for being the source of them. Even their academic honesty is called into suspect when they use the phrase such as, the information presented here does not include the unknown number of people who died from grief and despair caused by the effects of the building of the wall had on their individual living situations. Meaning, they've completely ignored all the reasons for the creation of the wall and the hostile actions of the West German government. By using this expression, they've openly admitted that there was no attempt at historical accuracy. As if to place a final note on the work, the study was financed by the same government that sought their destruction. We are reminded of the old Winston Churchill saying, History is written by the victors. In no way can one consider this work even honest. Even some in the international community were well aware of the correct action taken by the East. Former French Premier Renard said already on the 19th of August 1961, according to the UPI, the sealing off measures of East Berlin government did not increase but lessened the danger of a third world war. The plain fact is the Berlin Wall was not the monster that had been made out to be by bourgeois propaganda. The reality stands quite stark. The creation of the Berlin Wall was a deliberate action to protect East Germany from U.S. imperialism via its proxy, West Germany. The fact that these hostile acts and terrorism by the West are ignored by bourgeois sources tells you how dishonest their intention is. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, Comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.